The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. I want to talk to you just a few minutes tonight on this thought, the all-knowing God. Amen. God's been described in many different ways throughout the Word of God. And as I was studying this and looking through it, the Bible lets us know that God is the Father to Israel, but He's also Father unto us who are born again. Matthew 23 and 9, Jesus said, And call no man your Father upon the earth, for one is your Father which is in heaven. Amen. And we know Him to be just. Deuteronomy 32 and verse number 4. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all His ways are judgment and God of truth. Without iniquity, just and right is He. Amen. Uh, we can trust that God's going to do whatever He's going to do. And He's going to do it right. Uh, it's not going to be jammed up and crossways. But He's going to be just in what He does. We know him to be long suffering, 2 Peter 3 and 9. The Lord's not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but as long suffering to us, we're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We know that God's merciful, Psalm 116 and verse 5. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. I thank him for his mercy, don't you? However, uh, tonight we also know God to be a God of wrath. Amen. 2 Thessalonians 1 and 8. In flame and fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's some of our family members tonight. Amen. If they don't get born again and washed in the precious blood of the Lamb of God, they're going to suffer a wrath of an almighty God. The Bible says there Jesus was talking to Nicodemus when he came to him. Uh, but I turned John's gospel, chapter number three, and Jesus told him, he said, you must be born again uh, to see the kingdom of heaven. And a few verses on down in Nicodemus' confusion, he didn't understand it. Jesus said, marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. I can remember Brother Allen preaching and years ago, and he said George Whitfield preached for years and years, and he preached the same message over and over. You must be born again. And one Sunday afternoon after the morning service was over, and uh, he was standing at the back as we normally do, and he was shaking hands, and this silver-haired lady came by, uh, she shook his hand and she said, Mr. Whitfield, she said, why is it that you're always preaching on you must be born again? They said that he smiled, a big old smile, and he looked her eyeball to eyeball and said, because you must be born again. Amen. Amen. And there's no way around it. We'll never attain salvation except through and by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I thank God that he uh, revealed that to me. Colossians 3, 5, and 6. Uh, the Bible says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affections, evil concupiscence, uh, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. In Hebrews 12 and 29, the Bible says, For our God is a consuming fire. Amen. So we know that God is a loving God. He's a merciful God. And we know that He's a wrathful God. And the Bible says, Vengeance is mine, and I will repay, saith the Lord. So it's not about us taking vengeance and taking revenge upon those who would do us wrong and harm upon our own selves because that's God's business. Uh, it's not our job to judge another man's servant. The Lord's army is the only army I know of where we shoot our own people on purpose. God help us tonight that we love one another, edify one another. If we see a brother fall, amen, if he's taken in a fight, we're to restore him, not beat him down and get on Facebook and Facebook cast him, amen, and run him down in to the pits of hell. Amen. We should love him and help him and lift him up. But I want to look at this tonight. God, you've heard this word. God is omniscient. Amen. 
And I looked up in Noah's Webster's dictionary. Mr. Webster says, having a universal knowledge or a knowledge of all things, infinitely knowing, all seeing. And this is how he ended it, as the omniscient God. I mean, that was a time when everybody, even lost men, they regarded an almighty God. Amen. We live in a day-to-day, -day, friend, uh, when nobody regards God. They don't re regard God's man. They don't regard the house of God, the things of God. We've gotten to a point in, our, uh, in uh, uh, the world today, the world is under such a strong delusion of Satan. Most people's going to walk right in. They're going to take the mark. They're going to take the number. And they're going to think that everything's all right. Amen. They're deceived unless the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine unto them, they are doomed for all eternity. God is omniscient tonight. How is he omniscient? How does he know everything? Because he's omnipresent. That word omnipresent means that he's present in all places at the same time. He is ubiquitary and I looked up that word and that word means that it's one that exists everywhere. That's God. I understand there's folks struggle with doubting uh, your salvation. I got some uh, saved at a very young age, and I've struggled with that from time to time throughout the years. Uh, but some, for you to ask somebody if they've ever been saved, and they give you an answer, well, I don't know whether I really have been or not. I mean, if God really changed you, and if there's somebody as big as God, a man who uh, spoke the world into existence, who created the sun, moon, and stars, the earth, amen, and, and all that is therein, if there's somebody that's that big, and he's moved on the inside of your soul, there's no way, amen, that he moved in and you didn't know it, amen. And I understand there there's a, can be a struggle there, but he exists everywhere. And he's also illimitable. That means that he cannot be limited or bound. Nothing binds my God tonight. He has no restriction. There's uh, nobody holding the ends of the check line and a bit in his mouth and a bridle on his head telling him which way to go. He's in control. I'm going to give you a couple points tonight and I'll let you go home. Number one tonight, He's an all-knowing God. The Lord knows mankind's inward workings. First of all, He knows mankind's heart. Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. God's the only one. I, I, and... I've been guilty of saying it before myself. I say, if, if I know my heart, we don't know our heart. Uh, our heart, we just read, beloved, the Bible says the very words breathed out of the mouth of a three times holy God says that we cannot know our heart. So we can't go on our heart. We can't go on our feelings. We only can go on what this book says. The facts. It's not hearsay. It's not what I say. It's not what Brother Jim Bob says or Sister Susie says. It don't matter what Papa and Granny says. It matters thus saith the Word of God. Proverbs 15 and 11, Hell and destruction are before the Lord. How much more than the hearts of the children of men. God's desire is that every man, woman, boy, and girl come to the saving knowledge of Christ. And that that fellowship that was broken there in the Garden of Eden some 6,000 years ago, amen, that that relationship status be restored. The only way it can be restored is through the shed blood of Christ. To reject the Son is to reject the Father. To reject the Father is to reject life. And to reject life is the second death. There's no coming back from that, friend. Once we draw our last breath on this side of eternity, there's not no motel between heaven and hell. If you're born again, the Bible, Apostle Paul said, absent from the body is present with the Lord. And the Lord Jesus Christ himself said in Luke 16, 
And the rich man also died and was buried and in hell lift up his eyes. I didn't read nowhere in this Bible, friend, that there's a rest area between this life and the next. You must be born again. But not only does he know her heart, he knows her thoughts. Psalm 94 and 11, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of man that they are vanity. That's why we can't depend upon our heart because our heart leads us toward selfishness, toward pride. Pride puffeth up. The Bible says that pride goeth before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. If we trust in our heart, our heart's gonna lead us into iniquity, amen? It's gonna lead us into sinfulness. It's gonna lead us into the lust of the flesh. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all the things that are in the world, they're not of God, amen? Sin, self, exaltation is what Satan wants us to do. That's why most people can't get saved. They're too high on their self. We gotta bow down, amen, in the throne of our heart. Dethrone ourself that Christ may be able to reside on the throne. He's the only one that's got a big K king in the front of his name. I know that in English they say that if they've got a title, uppercase it, but they ain't no king. And I know we honor our presidents and so forth, and they put them big P's and they put all these capitalization on these titles. These earthly titles mean Jack Diddley, friend. Christ is the only one that we should exalt with the title. He's the only one that, I believe, it deserves to be recognized as somebody because He is. He's the Savior of all mankind. Matthew 28, and verse number, or 22 and 18, excuse me, but Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, why tempt ye me, ye hypocrite? What if He is speaking to some of us? God help us. Luke 6 and 8, but He knew their thoughts and said to the man which had the withered hand, rise and stand forth in the midst. And he arose and stood forth, amen. And there was those who was believing in Christ and they were putting their faith in the Lord and he knew what they were thinking and he knew those who would receive him and he knew those Pharisees and Sadducees, they was gonna come up with some way, amen, to exalt their own righteousness above his amen and they were going to try to uh, frame him and and make him out to be a phony and a charlatan amen they tried and tried and tried but thank god after he uh, bowed his head and he gave up the ghost after he cried it is finished amen and 72 hours later after joseph and nicodemus laid him in that tomb 72 hours later he kicked the back door out of that tomb amen and he came out victorious over death hell and the grave and we have nothing to fear tonight amen he done it all. The Lord knows mankind's reason in Mark 2 and 8, and immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said to them, Why reason ye these things in your heart in your hearts? Amen. And I mean, even the disciples, they doubted him, and they they tried to understand the, the old covenant wasn't. Uh, made revealed uh, to them, amen. They didn't have the new covenant. We've got both covenants today. We can see the new covenant in the old covenant and uh, the new covenant, amen, it reveals the light, amen, of the foreshadowings of Christ, all the prophecies and all of the things that have happened and the things that are to come. It reveals, it gives us that light, but they didn't have that. They didn't understand. And those who truly didn't believe, they tried to think carnally and think that they could do these things on their own amen but they couldn't do it the lord knows what's in mankind john 2 24 and 25 but jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men and he needed not that any testify uh, that any should testify of man for he knew what was in man amen we don't uh, it's not when we come and pray and bring our petitions before god Knowledge that uh, every good and every perfect gift coming from the Father, why? In whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. Amen. I mean, I'm talking about we serve a perfect God. Amen. I'm a very imperfect person tonight. You don't believe me? Ask my wife and my kids. They'll tell you I'm a pretty sorry human being. But thank God, Christ, He can forgive. 
forgive all. He can right all the wrongs. He can take our uh, stony, scarlet sin part and make it whiter than the driven snow. Secondly, tonight the Lord knows mankind's outward goings. The Lord knows our ways. Amen. Job 34, 21. For his eyes are upon the ways of man, and he seeth all of his goings. Psalm 1 and 6, For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall purge. He knows the outcome. At Psalms 119 and 168, I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies, for all my ways are before thee. Not only does he know our ways, but he knows our goings. In Proverbs 5 and 21, the Bible says, For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all of his going. He knows all about you and I. He knows us better than we know ourselves. Uh, he knows what we're going to trip and fall and bust our front teeth out on time after time after time. The Bible says uh, that if we get too built up in pride, we're going to fall flat on our face. God help us. He's watching us. He knows our goings, but He knows our path. Psalm 142 and 3, When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. And in the way wherein I walk, have they privily laid a snare for me. And he knows what lies ahead. Job 23 and 10. Uh, but he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. You know all them times you mess up. I don't know about y'all, but I'm not here for friendship. And for all that, I'm here to teach the truth. Amen. And there's nothing that we can do that God's not problem's not my wife. It's not my children. Our biggest problem, we blame it on the devil. But God, He's watching and He's got a mind in this game. And on every one of us is lives. And He's watching. Our flesh is not saved, church. That's why Job said he was waiting on his change to come. Amen. And that's why we can get happy when they say Mule Land. When the marriage is consummated. That's why we're going to live forever, amen. It's just as fresh uh, today in heaven as it was uh, the day that they beat him, amen, down there in the garrison below uh, the courtrooms and they mocked him and they uh, spit in his face and they pulled his beard hair out, amen. They put the crown of thorns on him and they crucified him, drove the nails in his hands and his feet and that soldier speared him in the side today some 2,000 years later ain't none of these other little G gods can say that friend devil put that in his crack pipe and smoke it hey he's done lost he's lost he may win a few battles but the war's done been won amen Jesus Christ settled it all he knows her path he knows her works amen Job 34 and 25 therefore he knoweth her works and he overturneth them in the night so that they are destroyed. Hebrews 6, 10, 11. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of the hope and the end. Amen. That's my heart's desire to finish well. I want to live right and I want to do right, but I want to die right. Don't you? God's what you he always hear this saying, I'm trying to hurry. Listen, I've heard these people say, Well, they somebody watching. They are. Man is watching. Yeah. We might disappoint men, but it don't hurt my heart nowhere near as much to hurt mankind as it does for me to hurt my heavenly father. Amen. Amen. Because at the end of the day, I'm not gonna answer for you. He's watching us little penny any humans. God help us to get it in our heart, in our mind, that God, not only is there people watching us, but God's watching us. The Lord knows the mankind that are his own. The Lord knows those that trust in him. Nahum 1 and 7. The Lord is good and strong and a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knoweth them that trust in him. Job 13, 15. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. But I will maintain mine own ways before him.
Proverbs 30 and 5, every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. Not only does He know those that trust Him, but He knows those that don't trust Him. Amen. Psalm 34 and 22, the Lord redeemeth the soul of His servant, and none of them that trust in Him shall be desolate. Amen. Those who forget and reject God, the Bible says that every nation that forgets God, uh, the wickedness, amen, it's going to be turned into hell. That's where America's headed. I believe there's a deadline that you can cross and you can reject God so much in your conscience. That's where our nation's at. Nothing moves. I've heard the old man of God preach that message. What moves you? God help us tonight. God's watching us. We've missed something along the way. God help us. The Lord knew us before we knew Him. John 1, 48, Nathaniel said unto Him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto Him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. Before we was ever formed in our mother's womb, Christ knew. He knew we'd be born. He knew what a rotten, lousy, low-life piece of trash that I would be. Yet Christ, he said, Lord, I'll go. He said, Father, I'll go. That's how much he loves mankind. And then you've got these fools. The Bible says, fools said in his heart, there is no God. God help us tonight, church. He knows them that belong to him. I'm going to read a couple more verses and I'll be done. John 10 and 3. To him, Jesus said, now to him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name. He laid them out. Thank God he's let us out. John 10, 14, and 6, verse 14, and then skip to verse 16. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known of mine. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. That's us. We're that engrafted fold, that wild olive we got in on something real good. We didn't even deserve to even have any inkling of a clue. It even it existed. But I sure am thankful that he came to, unto his own, and his own received him not. But it goes on to say, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the Son of God, even to them that believe on his name. Amen. Ain't you glad of that tonight? He loved us enough to die for. He knows them that love him, 1 Corinthians 8 and 3. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. He knows if we love him tonight. 1 Peter 1 and 8. Whom having not seen you love, in whom though now you see him not yet believing, you rejoice. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. Amen. Ain't you glad of that tonight? We serve an all-knowing God. He knows her uprising. He knows her down setting. He knows her path. He knows her thoughts. He knows her ways. We don't know what tomorrow holds. But thank God, if the sun don't come out in the morning, we know who holds tomorrow. I appreciate your attention tonight. Lord bless you. I love you. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.